What if I told you that you could get more views on YouTube while doing less work? Well, AI is making this a reality. So today I wanna to go over three AI tools I'm personally using that are generating me an additional 340,000 views every single month. We'll go step-by-step step through each tool and show you how to use them to generate more views than a celebrity sex tape. The first tool is Time Bolt. It's a free tool that uses AI automation to help you edit videos faster than it takes Discord to install 47 updates. Why does it always have so many updates? I don't understand. Time Bolt's flagship feature is it'll take raw video or audio footage, automatically detect and cut out any of the silent bits where you're not talking, and then export your cut down video or audio as an editable XML file. This means it's completely non-destructive, so you can open up that file in an editing program and adjust any of the cuts Time Bolt's made. I use Time Bolt to save literally tens of hours cutting down my voiceovers, my shorts, my regular talking head videos, my OnlyFans content. And when I ran the numbers with all the extra time I've been able to save, I've been able to increase my overall video production and editing speed by about 17%, which means I'm able to create more videos in the same amount of time. And these more videos alone have added up to an extra 140,000 views a month for me. And I even had enough extra time left over to watch an episode of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> So let me show you how it works. So once you install Timebolt onto your desktop, you'll open it up and you can just drag and drop your video or audio file in here. And now our file is loaded up into Timebolt. If we scroll down to this section, it's called our timeline, you can see how many cuts it's made while I've been stuttering or redoing my script or whatever it is I'm doing. In this case, we can see from our output here, Timebolt's actually automatically cut out about five minutes of 43 seconds of silence, which is pretty significant when you consider that this original file was about 15 minutes in length. Now what you can do is go through this file manually listen to the results. Sometimes we want to cut out certain sections of audio, not because it's a silence, but just because it's a retake of the same line. So for example, I've just recorded the same line multiple times and the first couple of lines, I kind of messed it up a bit, so I don't want to keep them. Now you could just go back and manually delete it by clicking, but every click costs you time. So what we're trying to do is save as much time as possible. So what's easier to do is to simply hit B on your keyboard and it's going to back cut the previous clip, I can hit it again. It's gonna back cut that entire section. And now my duplicate lines have been cut out and I can continue reviewing my video. So I'm not gonna go through this entire video because that'd be really boring. But even just from going through what we've done so far, I've already cut this video down by about seven minutes. Manually doing this in an editing software would have taken three or four times the amount of time. And as you're going through your timeline to speed up this process, you can cut it to playback rate and change this to 1.5 or two or even three X. So you can get through your entire timeline much faster. Another time saving hack, if you want to add transitions in between your clips so your cuts aren't as harsh, instead of having to do that manually in your editing software, you can come down to time bolt here, click on the check mark here, apply transitions, you can apply say a crossfade transition, adjust the duration of the transition, which is how long it will take for the transition to actually transition, and then you don't have to do it manually. I personally prefer not to add transitions because one of my favorite ways to disguise cuts is punch-ins. It's basically when you rapidly zoom in or out on a certain clip, it adds a nice little visual change and it kind of disguises the fact that there was actually a cut. Now, normally in an editing software, you would do this by manually adding keyframes, which is multiple clicks. Time bolt, you can do this with one button press. So for example, if we look at this portion of video, we can see here where I'm moving my playhead, a big portion of silence was cut out. If I play this video now, people are gonna be able to tell that we cut out that portion. So what I can do is come to this second clip here and just hit P on my keyboard. It's gonna automatically punch in. I can hit P multiple times if I wanna zoom in farther, but for now, I'm just gonna go back to default. I think that looks pretty good. And now our transition is gonna look a bit more like this. How can VidIQ help you do this? Well, let me ask you, do you think you'd be able to create videos that got more views if you had access to the massive time saver, we can add all of our punch-ins and punch-outs directly within Timebolt. And this is one of my favorite features. Well, another useful feature of Timebolt is if you come to uncheck and click on start audio transcription, Timebolt is going to transcribe your entire video and learn what words are in your video. That's useful because then we can tell Timebolt if there are particular words we want it to cut out. For example, um, ah, uh, like, end, you know, etc. I can enter those words into Umcheck and then Timebolt's going to detect those words and automatically cut them out of our video. There are a bunch of other features here, but if we come down, I wanna show you something called turbo mode. Now the average human speaks at about 150 words per minute. However, the average human can comprehend somewhere between 400 and 800 words per minute. That means if we're watching a video where someone's just talking like this one, there's a bunch of unused capacity, unused 
RAM in your brain that has nothing to do and can get distracted and want to click off your video. So to try and take up a bit more of our viewers mental RAM, something we can do is speed up our video so we're saying more words per minute. I've seen some big YouTubers talking at 220 to 250 words per minute. But training yourself to speak that fast can be hard and just simply fast forwarding your footage in an editing program is going to sound super robotic and gross like this unless you know what the sound designer can manually fix that. Or unless you have time bolt, what you can do is come to activate turbo mode and we can change our speed multiplier so when our video is exported it's going to be slightly sped up but time bolt's going to do all the audio editing for us so our voice isn't going to sound super robotic -y or gross. So for example I might want to speed up my video by 10% which would be 1.1 if you want to speed up by 20% for example you put 1.2 if you want to speed up by 5% you put 1.05 and then just hit add to render queue. Then what we're going to do is render our file as an XML and already it's done. And now I'm using Adobe Premiere so XML file is going to work for me. I'll put some graphics on screen to show you which file type to render as depending on which editing program you're using. Now what we can do is grab that file we just rendered and drag it into our media pool for whatever editing software we're using and then we just grab that media and drag it into our timeline and we have our edited project here but what's really cool is if we double click into this we can see all of the individual cuts that time bolt has made and if we want to edit some of them for example let's say i wanted to remove this and drag this one out I can still do it without breaking anything. And all the time we've saved with Time Bolt has led to me being able to increase my production by about 17%, which has led to me creating more videos, which has led to about an extra 140,000 views a month. So overall, here are my thoughts on Time Bolt. I like how intuitive and easy to use Time Bolt is, and I particularly like how it's non-destructive. It drastically speeds up my editing. And for those who want to keep their entire editing workflow under one roof, Time Bolt has plugins that integrate directly with DaVinci Resolve and Adobe. Premiere. However, the free versions of Time Bolt do have some limitations. Firstly, your videos will be watermarked and you won't be able to export as an XML file, which is this editable file we've been talking about. However, fortunately, Time Bolt isn't that expensive. If you're on an annual plan, it's about $8 per month. And there are no restrictions on the amount of footage you can edit with Time Bolt each month. Another disadvantage, unfortunately, is UmCheck, the tool you can use to cut out specific words like um, are, uh, like, etc., is pay per use. And another mildly annoying thing is that it's not going to be able to remove retakes like other AI editing services such as Gling. However, I still use Timebolt over Gling because in my experience, Timebolt has the most accurate cuts and so overall saves the most amount of time. By the way, I'll leave all the links to the tools I'm talking about in this video down below if you're interested. But did you know there's another tool that can help bring your dead YouTube videos back to life? It's called Thumbnail Test. It was invented by a guy who was hired to build YouTube software for Mr. Beast himself. I use this tool to test multiple thumbnails for the exact same YouTube video and these tests have led to me blowing up some of my older videos that were once deader than my social life. And here are some examples of what revamping thumbnails like this can actually do. This is one of my student's videos and as we can see his video died faster than a squirrel with nut allergies. In the first day of it being posted it got a whopping 36 views. But after a thumbnail test it shot up and now it's sitting at about 1.3k. Or here's a slightly larger example. You can kind of see where the thumbnail test was done right about here because you can see our click through rate shoots up by 2% compared to what it was before. And that test help this video go from about 100,000 views all the way up to now 660,000 views. Now all up, the amount of additional views coming from the older videos I've blown up with thumbnail tests have increased my results by about 15% and this has led to an additional about 120,000 views per month for me. So the first step to using this tool is you want to identify videos in your channel that you think have a lot of potential, they're still getting some impressions but they're not getting anywhere near the amount of views you reckon they deserve. Now for those of you who are beginner YouTubers that might sound vague but I'll leave a link down below to a video that should go into that in a bit more detail if you need help with it. Anyway, once you've found those videos, what you're gonna do is open up Thumbnail Test and in the main dashboard, you're gonna see all of the videos that you have on your channel. Then what we're gonna do is pick one of those videos that have potential but haven't blown up yet and create some thumbnail variations for them. Now, in some circumstances, you might wanna create an entirely new thumbnail, but sometimes if the video is doing okay but you think it could be doing a lot better, you can just make minor tweaks. Here are some alternate thumbnail versions I've made. You can see I've like switched the side that the phone's on, I've changed the size of the text, I've adjusted the number from 70% to 73%, etc, etc. Once you've got your thumbnail variations, you want to come into thumbnail test and then click on the video that you're going to be doing the thumbnail test for. Now, I can't actually click on this one because I'm already running a test for it. So let's just click on this one, for example. 
we're doing a thumbnail test, we're just gonna click thumbnail only, but you can also test your titles or you can do a title and thumbnail combination test. You're just gonna hit next step from here. And then what we're gonna do is upload all of our different thumbnail variations. Let's say I just grab all of these ones, drag and drop them in. From here, you can hit next. And this is where you get to select the settings of your test. So what I would recommend for most people is keep this on daily, come to test format and change classic to consecutive. And then in the number of days, what you're gonna do is take the number of thumbnails that you have and multiply that by seven. So in this case, we have seven thumbnails. Seven times seven is 40, I'm pretty sure it's 49. <laughs> So what we would do is come into the number of days and we would select 49. Then all you have to do is click on run test. Obviously I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna run the test on this video. And our test is then gonna show up in this ongoing tab. Once your test is done, thumbnail test will send you an email and it'll show up in this past tests tab. And you can see these are all my past tests. And so if we click into one of these, for example, this one, we can see the results each individual thumbnail got. And what you wanna look at is the views and impression stat. So this thumbnail, for example, got 22,600 views compared to these thumbnails, which got 19 and 15K. Now, all three of these thumbnails ran for the exact same amount of time on my channel. So what that's telling us is this thumbnail is probably gonna get us way more views from the same number of impressions. So we're probably gonna wanna make this thumbnail the main one for our video. And when you do this right, what happens is that video starts to snowball, get exponentially more and more views. And then you can have videos that were once dead blow up like the examples I showed you earlier. Overall, thumbnail test, very easy to use as a piece of software. And it's quite cheap, relatively speaking. It's 19 bucks a month. And the only other tool that even comes close to it out there would be TubeBuddy, which is 32.99 a month. Now the impact a good thumbnail test can have on your channel can be massive. But one drawback of thumbnail test is you're never going to be able to get 100% accurate results, especially if you're a small channel with videos getting less than 500 impressions a week. So there might be a higher degree of chance or randomness in your test results. Another potential con of thumbnail test is it takes additional time to execute. Unlike something like Timebolt, which cutting down your video is something you have to do anyway, testing new thumbnails is an additional job to add to the to-do list, but I do think it's worth it. So what I would do is treat it like creating a video. If your goal is to make one video, video a week, update your goal to make one video and revamp the thumbnail of one video every single week. However, sometimes creating revamped thumbnails or just creating thumbnails in general can require some design skills or for you to pay someone with design skills. But if you do want to do it yourself, I found the thumbnail test community to be quite engaged, even to the point where you actually have Rox, the founder, actively talking to users in their Discord. Our final tool is vidIQ. vidIQ is the world's most downloaded suite of YouTube tools. And recently they've added a bunch of AI focused tools to help creators better understand their data and make more content faster. I personally use vidIQ's keyword and competitor research tools frequently, but for this video, I wanna focus on my favorite AI tool vidIQ offers that I use to research, automatically generate content and come up with better video ideas. Now vidIQ is a bit of a hard one to calculate the ROI of because it has so many different tools and strategic tools within it. But if I had to guess, I'd say it contributes about an additional five to 10% to my channel, which is about an extra 40 to 80,000 views per month. And here's how. So the tool I want to show you, it's called the AI Coach. It's basically like ChatGPT, but vidIQ has trained it on YouTube data. And on top of that, it can connect with your channel and actually look at your channel's analytics and videos. Now, obviously, just like ChatGPT, you can use this to generate a lot of text-based content. So the titles, descriptions, community tab posts, etc. But since vidIQ actually has access to your channel, there are some unique ways you can use it to get some really interesting insights. So what you would do, come to vidIQ, come across to AI Coach and click on it. Then you need to click on advanced because we're gonna be using our channel data for this. Then in the chat, we're gonna paste the following prompt. Analyze the five videos on my channel that have been posted within the last 12 months that have the lowest impression click-through rate, then provide at least three potential title and thumbnail revamps for each of these videos that could improve their potential click-through rate. If I hit enter on this, it's gonna think about our question, then it's gonna actually analyze our YouTube channel data and spit out our answer. So we can see here, it's got my five videos and you can probably check this channel. You can see that this makes sense because all of these videos are currently getting significantly less views than most of my other ones. And what it's done is it's revamped the title for each of these. So what I could potentially do now is go back to thumbnail test and run a title test by selecting the title option when we go through to create a test and test these three new titles that might potentially improve the click-through rate of this video. If I wanted to create new thumbnails for a potential video, I could say, 
And here it's gonna give us a thumbnail concept, basically saying five mistakes to avoid and having like a, a big like warning or stop sign on the thumbnail. Pretty basic concept, but clearly my current one's not doing so well, so it would definitely be worth a test. And you can see how doing this systematically can help you bring up your low performers, help them start getting more views each day, which will overall bring up the amount of views your channel is getting every single day. Another prompt I like, if I come to click on new chat and start a new chat, what are five common themes across my worst performing videos? So here's an answer it gave me earlier. It said general YouTube tips videos. Videos like five big mistakes YouTubers still make. Apparently when I make general YouTube tips videos, they don't perform as well. Videos about thumbnail strategies. Apparently these don't perform as well. I guess that makes sense because they're a bit more technical. Um, personal experiences also make sense because I guess people aren't clicking on these videos because of me. They're clicking on these videos because of the knowledge. They ask you how you are. You just have to say that you're fine. So you're not really fine. You just can't get into it because they would never saying. understand. Insider knowledge. This is interesting, but I guess it makes sense. All of the videos that I've created where I've interviewed like ex-YouTube employees or even YouTubers often don't perform as well as videos that I just create on my own. So I guess I should stop making those ones. And for number five, we've got storytelling. That kind of relates back to personal experiences, but it's saying that when I create videos like sharing my story, they don't tend to perform as well. And this is all really useful for me to know. So now going forward, I can be like, okay, I'm not going to create videos around any of these things. So I can really quickly and easily learn from my mistakes and make it more likely that my future videos are going to get more views. If anyone else has interesting prompts, feel free to leave them in the comments below, but I'll show you one more prompt that can help you get a better idea of specific videos. That's kind of cool. And it is do a complete SWOT audit on my latest video. SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And so here's an audit I got earlier. You could obviously go through all of these, but here's some interesting things. Firstly, it's telling me that my video is getting more dislikes than my usual videos get. So I might want to figure out why that is. That makes sense because the video that doing an audit of was I bought uh, 5 million views. We got a bunch of hate in the comments. People are going, oh, you just cheated the system. We can also see our average view duration was up, but our average view percentage was down. So maybe what we want to do is keep the same pacing for our future videos, but make the videos a little bit shorter and see if we can find maybe a better balance there. It's going to tell us here that we could capitalize on our video success to create like maybe similar follow-up videos because it reckons this is like an untapped market. It's also warning us that buying views is a controversial topic, which we discovered through the hate in the comments. So if I am to create similar follow-up videos, I might wanna be a bit more careful about how I approach them. So those are some interesting prompts I like, but you can create your own prompts and ask this whatever you want. And just like something like ChatGBT, it'll spit out an answer for you that might be interesting. And if you come and click up here, you can see VidIQ has some prompt templates that can get you going if you're stuck for ideas. So in summary, the AI coach from VidIQ can save you a bunch of time creating content, analyzing your channel and brainstorming ideas. A massive plus of VidIQ that connects directly with your channel. So you know the tools giving you personalized custom advice for your specific situation. But it should be noted that some of the tools in vidIQ are still in alpha, so they might not work perfectly every single time at the time of recording this video. Also to harness the full power of vidIQ having access to your channel, you're probably gonna need to actually have some data on your channel, like some videos posted, maybe a handful of subscribers, handful of views, because otherwise the AI is kind of gonna be running blind. With vidIQ, you get a huge amount of tools under one roof. However, it is a bit expensive. Now I'll leave a link down below where you can go to my page and get vidIQ for just $1 for your first month. But after that, it's gonna be $49 per month. So it is the most expensive tool on this list. However, on the other hand, it does provide by far the most amount of tools. And things like the AI coach is literally like having a personalized assistant by your side 24 seven and you're only paying them $49 a month, which would be pretty illegal if this wasn't AI. <laughs> so all the tools I talked about in this video will be linked down below. If one of them piqued your fancy, go check it out. And some of my links in the description might give you a special discount so you can save some money there. But something else to note is because VidIQ has so many tools, for many people, it can be overwhelming. So if you're interested, video on screen where I'll go over VidIQ and my four favorite tools in it in painstaking detail to help you get more views. Check out the VidIQ video on screen and I'll see you there.